Welcome to CDCI Connects, a monthly newsletter from the Center on Disability and Community Inclusion at the University of Vermont. This is issue 12, September 2021. And we're back. Where we've been and what's next. Dear friends and colleagues, it's easy to see the past year as being something of a well of lost time. Staying home during a pandemic can have that effect. But we prefer to look for the silver lining. We prefer to see it as an opportunity to reflect and reboot. Reflect. As the scope of our worlds narrowed, we had the chance to take stock of what matters and what we want to matter. And that brings us to the reboot. Reboot. As the world begins to open back up, we've learned that being online is a balance. On the one hand, it's easy to get fatigued by the constant stream of social media and screen time. But on the other hand, having more meetings and events offer a virtual option has opened up access to many members of our community. Our Community Advisory Council made that loud and clear at our September meeting. When you make virtual access standard, you remove barriers to inclusion for people with disabilities. Whether it's city council meetings, local lectures, or regular meetings with your favorite advocacy organization, hi! Providing a virtual option makes more access possible. So, what have you learned from the pandemic? What will you be taking forward from it? And what would you like to leave behind? As for us, we're really glad to be back, and we hope to be seeing more of you this year as well. Story one, new Gian Greco cartoon for 2021. Michael F. Gian Greco, distinguished professor of special education at the University of Vermont and CDCI faculty researcher, earlier this year unveiled a new entry in his celebrated series of cartoons, Absurdities and Realities of Special Education. In collaboration with Vermont artist Kevin Ruel, Gian Greco updates the series based on new findings in the research as well as the changing perceptions of labels related to disability. You can browse the full collection of cartoons online as part of UVM's digital collection. To access them, go to cdi.uvm.edu slash collection slash Gian Greco cartoons. This newest cartoon released earlier this year is called Witch Path. The cartoon has two panels stacked vertically. The upper and lower panels are overlapped on the far left by the image of an infant in a cradle. The upper panel, labor Bigger Life, shows a bright, vibrantly colored scene of a path going up a hillside. Along this upward path are images of buildings that are labeled inclusive schooling, real supported work, and home in the community. At the top of the hill, it shows two people together labeled relationships and choices. The lower panel, labeled Smaller Life, shows a dark and muted scene with few signs of life on a jagged descending pathway going down a hillside. Along the downward path are images of buildings that are labeled segregated schooling, sheltered employment or no work, and group home. At the bottom of the hill, it shows a person falling into an abyss labeled increasing isolation and limited choices. The tagline under the cartoon reads, which path should we pursue? To the left side of the cartoon, there is an acknowledgement line that reads, inspired by the Australian Alliance for Inclusive Education, www.allmeansall.org.au. Second story, are your welcome back events accessible? As welcome back events kick into high gear, how can you ensure your events are open to everybody? Some percent of guests at every event you host will have disabilities related to mobility, vision, hearing, sensory considerations, or cognitive and developmental disabilities. Many of your guests may have more than one disability to consider. Let's think this through together with our free online downloadable guide. You can get your copy at go.uvm.edu slash access events. And our final story of this newsletter, let's go with the early mobility team. 
The CDCI's early mobility team are looking for SEED partners again this year. SEED is the UVM College of Engineering and Mathematics annual senior experience in engineering design. UVM engineering students work with researchers to build new real-world tools, and in this case, new real-world tools for mobility. The early mobility team's Scotty Taylor explains. Imagine you are a three- or four-year-old kid, and you're watching your older brother and your younger sibling and your parents and your dog run around outside and have so much fun, and all you want to do is join in but you have a body that doesn't move the way that we typically think about movement for kids. And um, you're restricted to being still or relying on being carried by your parents to move around. Our project helps these kids learn about independent mobility. And we have a couple different ways to do it, but we're looking for your help with a very specific tool. Right now, the tools that exist are power wheelchairs, which are huge, and expensive and cumbersome. You need a big house to drive them in. And you need insurance to say that you need one. Um, and for some of these kids that we work with, they're not even sure that power wheelchairs are gonna be the right piece of equipment. So what we're looking for is a bit of a platform that's motorized. And hopefully you guys can figure out a way to make it so that we can drive it with a joystick that moves around based on where we might need that joystick to be accessible. Um, and we're thinking that maybe we plunk a stroller base on top so that the kid has something to sit in as they explore how to move their bodies on their own. Um, if you think that you can help us with that, we would love to have you be part of our seed team this year for 2021, 2022. Uh, so let us know. Thanks. For more information on CDCI's Early Mobility Project, visit go.uvm.edu slash early mobility. Let's turn now to the job opportunity section. We are hiring. We're looking for a best co-coordinator at CDCI. This co-coordinator will share leadership of a team supporting schools and students across Vermont through the Building Effective Supports for Teaching Students with Behavioral Challenges, that's BEST, project, including VTPBIS, Vermont Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. They will oversee grant applications, development, and management of the overall work plan based on priorities established by the Vermont Agency of Education in conjunction with their fellow co-coordinator. More information about this job is available at go.uvm.edu slash best jobs. Courtesy Post, Home Visiting Coordinator at Vermont Child Development Division. The Child Development Division is recruiting for a home visiting coordinator for the Children's Integrated Services Unit. This role will be responsible for administrative, coordination, and consultative work at a professional level involving the coordination of elements of an array of statewide home visiting and early childhood and family mental health programs and services which are provided to the local community-based organizations. More information is available at careers.vermont.org. Gov. Courtesy Post. Teaching Artists. Inclusive Arts Vermont. Do you love to engage people in celebrating their strengths, learning skills, and finding joy through the arts and creativity? Are you an artist and an educator? Inclusive Arts Vermont is looking to add part-time contracted teaching artists to our team. The deadline to apply is 10-15-15. 2021. That's October 15th, 2021. Find out more at inclusiveartsvermont.org. Let's turn now to the culture corner and find out which stories have caught our attention in the world of disability advocacy. Story one, KALW's Disability Visibility in Medicine series. In their weekly news show, KALW recently featured two stories of why it's important to prioritize disability in medical care. The first story addresses a California Bay resident's fight to access medical support for her disability during the pandemic. It's all been documented in the truck, and he said to me, well, look, and he gestured to my body, and he said, you've always known this was coming. This has been coming for a long time, 
and you know there's nothing we can really do about it. That was in quotes. Ingrid says she felt like she'd been punched in the gut, and she interpreted what he said even more darkly. The second story, an interview with a disabled physician, investigates why it's so important for people with disabilities to be represented as physicians and other medical care providers. I think that they felt that in their medical education, they weren't given enough access to real people with disabilities so that they could learn how to take care of them. You know, none of their standardized patients, for example, were of people with disabilities, or if they were, they were often portrayed by actors who actually didn't have those disabilities and so were not realistic depictions. Both stories are available in audio and written formats at KALW.org. Story two, the highs and lows of high-tech prosthetics. Over at the popular podcast 99% Invisible, People who use high-tech prosthetics have something to say about the good, the bad, and the systems crash. This is the sound of Brit giving me a little demo of how her prosthetic hand works over Zoom. I call this one the Obama talking point. It's the thumb resting on top of the index finger, and you're like, so you go, yes. This one might be like, I am a sophisticated cyborg, and I am handing you my credit card. This prosthetic hand has a sleek carbon fiber casing with specific pre-programmed grips that she can control just by flexing the muscles in her residual limb. This kind of assistive technology has been life-changing for a lot of people who have limb differences. But for Brit in particular, it hasn't been life-changing at all. In fact, her cutting-edge bionic arm has been a pretty major disappointment. It's just not, it's not what you imagine. It's not like, well, I'm like everyone else now. It's, it's something different. Story is available in both audio and written format. And our final culture corner story for today is parents of children with disabilities join the legal fight over masks in schools. Over at NPR, an interesting debate to keep tabs on. When it comes to mandating masks in schools, how does the intersection between freedom and safety impact students with disabilities? We hear all the time, oh, only kids with pre-existing conditions are the ones that get sick and die, said parent Brittany Schweigert. Well, that's my kid. Find out more over at npr.org. What's coming up on our events calendar? Let's review some of the upcoming events. Deaf Awareness Panel Presentation. Wednesday, September 29th, 7 to 8.15 p.m., online. Deaf Awareness Panel Presentation. Deaf-owned businesses will be moderated by UVM American Sign Language Lecturer Nicholas Lalonde. Adaptive Aerials Taster Class, Saturday, October 3rd, 1230 to 145 p.m. in Burlington, Vermont. Aerial Dance uses fabrics hung from the ceiling to explore movement in relation with gravity. In Adaptive Aerial, participants are invited to explore a new way of moving with the invigorating support of aerial fabric. Teaching artists Nicole and Toby create a safe and supportive community to encourage and celebrate our collective creativity as we explore how we can hang, spin, pull, push, and rest our bodies in relation to the fabric. All are welcome. An Inclusive Arts Vermont event. Find out more over at inclusivearts.vermont.org. The 2021 VTPBIS Annual Forum, Thursday, October 7th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. online. While we wanted to gather in person, with the uncertainty of COVID this fall, we have decided to hold this event virtually on Zoom. We are still excited to be exploring with new and experienced VTPBIS schools for a day of learning, sharing, and celebration. Find out more at pbisvermont.org. Turning now to Craftsbury, Vermont, for the U.S. Paralympic Nordic Skiing Open House. Saturday, October 16th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in Craftsbury, Vermont. Designed to introduce any para-athletes or their friends, family, or helpers to the Craftsbury Outdoor Center and learn more about opportunities to access cross-country skiing. Introduction to para-Nordic skiing for all those interested, 
Test out Nordic sit skis, visually impaired biathlon rifle, and jump in on a ski erg competition in a sit ski. Connect with others and become part of the para Nordic community. No registration necessary. And finally, coming up on Tuesday, October 19th at 3.30 p.m. online, we have a Graduate Certificate in Disability Studies information session. Come hear about the Certificate of Graduate Studies in the Interdisciplinary Study of Disability at UVM. This program is for working professionals and students who want to further their research and knowledge through a diversity and equity lens. Those enrolled in the program will learn about the history of disability culture, as well as our progress and path to inclusion for and with people with disabilities. Dr. Winnie Luby will share what the program entails and discuss how this program could benefit you in your professional career. Find out more at go.uvm.edu slash disability studies. Or to register, go to go.uvm.edu slash oct19. That's O-C-T-1-9. This has been CDCI Connects, a monthly newsletter from the Center on Disability and Community Inclusion at the University of Vermont, Issue 12, September 2021. Thanks for staying with us. The University of Vermont Center on Disability and Community Inclusion. We serve, we learn, we share, we connect. Find out more at go.uvm.edu slash cdci.